GateSeq pairs two sequencers with a set of utilities. It allows you to create rhythms and apply those to other sources in your system. In this video, we will walk through the Gate Sequencer engine and explain how it controls the utility circuit. This should get you fully up to speed with the module's functionality and hopefully get you thinking about how you could use it in a patch. The heart of the module is a pair of sequencers running in parallel, one and two. Each sequencer advances with a rising edge at the step input. You can basically think of it as the master tempo of the sequencer. You'll get the most predictable results with an LFO or a steady gate sequence, but we often experiment with irregular and sometimes audio rate clocks. For this first example, we're using 16th notes from the DAW through Silent Way. We've patched the gate output from sequencer 2 into the trigger input of the kick all, creating a kick on every gate event. With the pattern knob all the way down, no gates are transmitted. As we turn it up, more gates are added to the sequence until the kick strikes on every step. The patterns that you're switching through are known as Euclidean rhythms. They're basically the result of spreading notes evenly across a measure. If you've used them in a patch, you know they're an instant source of familiar grooves, and they can be combined into more complex patterns with logic modules and clock modulators. There are four available banks of patterns, and we can cycle through them by tapping the 2 sensor. As you move through the banks, they get further afield from traditional 16-step patterns. Now let's add some parts in the DAW and see how it all comes together. With the clock input alone, we can't guarantee that the downbeat of the kick pattern will line up with the downbeat of the DAW. Hence the reset input. We have a second gate sequence from the DAW firing at the start of every second measure. Let's patch that into the reset input to bring everything into alignment. We can play with adding resets to switch up the sequence and create new patterns. We can also use any pattern and the reset will force it to loop predictably. Sequencer 1 also has four banks of patterns like Sequencer 2, but each bank is paired with an internal clock multiplication division operation on the step input. There is also a sequence modulation parameter that changes to match the selected bank. Let's spend some time highlighting the usefulness of each option. The pattern control works generally like Sequencer 2. Fully counterclockwise mutes the channel and fully clockwise generates a gate on every step. The difference is that the step for sequencer 1 actually comes from the internal clock. We've patched the gate output into the strum input on ring so that a new note is created on every gate event. We're starting with 16th notes from the DAW as a clock and using a reset every two bars as before. Bank 1, the 1 to 1 mode, is exactly the same as the first bank on sequencer 2, but the modulation parameter allows you to offset the sequence by up to 8 steps. The interaction of the two parallel sequencers is full of pockets to explore. As we switch to the next bank, we notice that things have changed drastically. This is because the internal clock multiplier divider kicked in and sequencer 1 is now playing triplets against sequencer 2. Let's try an eighth note clock instead. We'll see that the choice of clock has a big effect on the output when the internal clock processor is active. Now we can see that the modulation parameter also controls the offset of the triplet sequence. As we switch to the next mode, we notice a new wrinkle. Sequencer 1 runs at a shuffled swung 2 times version of the input clock. Fortunately, the 8th notes we just switched to work perfectly. The modulation parameter now allows you to set the shuffle swing factor with a full shuffle at counterclockwise, straight ahead at noon, and a full swing at clockwise. Finally, the last bank offers up a clock multiplier divider. The modulation parameter sets the multiplier and the pattern selection sets the divider. Both make the pattern faster when you turn them clockwise. An extra output offers a logical combination of sequencers 1 and 2. The four modes, AND, OR, NOR, and XOR all have a distinct character. AND, as well as OR, 
reinforce the sequences while Nor and XOR play more of a counterpoint. The output is also gated against the sequencer one clock, meaning that the rising edge of the output is always quote unquote on the beat. Once you have the logic output patched up, try different modes and see what works best. Each knob has a corresponding CV input that accepts negative 5 volts to 5 volts. Its behavior exactly mimics the knob. A positive voltage is like turning the knob up and a negative voltage is like turning the knob down. These are your keys to making generative rhythms. Try sequencers and slow LFOs for more predictable results or use audio or noise for something that's a bit more pseudo-random. Now that we've seen how the sequencers work, let's turn our attention to the module's core utility circuit. The faceplate actually gives you something of a block diagram. Each of the inputs, A and B, travel through a track and hold and an amplitude gate before being mixed at the output. Sequencer 1 controls the A channel, and Sequencer 2 controls the B channel. The B channel also features an attenuverter before the processing stages. You can use the S and H sensors and the AND sensors to activate or deactivate any of the processing blocks. When all the blocks are deactivated, the A and B inputs are simply mixed at the output. The control schemes for both sequencers are the same, so we can look at one channel to start. We have the A plus B output patched to the structure input of rings, which is playing a new note with every step of gate seek's clock. We'll start with the A normal voltage at ground and work with the B channel. When the AND gate is activated, the channel is only allowed to pass while the corresponding sequencer is high. With nothing patched into the input, the manual control functions as an attenuverter for the gate pattern that's created. When we patch a signal into the input, we can hear it in small bursts at the output whenever sequencer 2 fires. There are two gating modes. The first is a sharp gate on, gate off, while the other is a ramp to smooth any pops from gating audio. You could also use this to process other gate or trigger sequences. Let's now disable the AND gate so the signal always passes and experiment with the track and hold. When it's inactive, the input always passes straight through. In mode 1, it's sampled and held while the gate is high, creating step segments in the input signal. In mode 2, it's sampled with every rising edge and held until the next gate event. This transforms the input into a stepped modulation source that changes in time with the sequencer. So that's the full story. There's lots of threads to follow by using different clocks, sequencer combinations, and inputs to the core circuit, you can get all kinds of interesting patterns and modulation signals. You can find more detailed documentation in the manual, and you can get started right away with the module in VCV Rack.